And welcome to Hey Man, I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. Hey man. Hey man. Hey, first of all, before we get started, uh, on today's podcast, we're super excited for you guys to be here. On today's podcast, um, I'm excited to talk about a bunch of these things we're going to be talking about. This is what's on the list of things we're going to talk about, and then we'll see how many we get to. I, I think this will be a fun game for you and I. Yeah, I mean, look, here's the thing. That's how we, you and I have a plan for every podcast. Okay, but we're going to say them out loud and see if we can stick to them. One, we're going to talk about um, I forget what you said. <laughs> and that's why we can't ever stick to stories on a pod. <laughs> yeah, we also wanted to start another podcast called Easily Entertained and Distracted. Because it's... I already forgot. It's the definition of Josh Wolf and I, which is easily entertained and very easily distracted. Oh, hold on. Let me see if I can remember what you said you wanted to talk about. Uh, oh, it was a, um, yeah, I'll, let me just say what I'm bringing to the table and then you can get into what you are. <laughs> Literally a minute ago, <laughs> not even, we talked about this. All right. Well, here's what I'm interested in. First, I asked you to find an urban dictionary term and then I'm going to, I'm, I get five guesses what it is. I could give for the one that I'm I got. Okay, but what, when we get to the game, we'll figure out the rules because we haven't done that yet. Cool. Here are the three things that I am interested in talking about in general, and then we can decide as we go what we want to talk about. Uh, the Seven M dance cult on TikTok. I watched that documentary. Fascinating. So I wouldn't mind talking about that. Okay, I haven't watched it. I know a little bit about it, so you'll yep. have to take me to school with that one. Uh, the whole WNBA, Caitlin Clark thing, uh, I, I would love to talk about, but I think my take's going to be a little bit different than most people. And Is it similar to the take you posted on Instagram? Pretty similar. Pretty similar. Okay. But with extended, like, if we get yeah. to it. Mm -hmm. And also, I just have a quick, I wouldn't mind just jumping into Pride Month real quick. Okay. Um, and, uh, but yeah, and then we'll, obviously we're going to Portland this weekend, guys. First of all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody, uh, who's been coming out to the show. Who's listening to the podcast. You guys are amazing. I want to say how much I appreciate all of you. Thank you all so much for this amazing life and giving me the opportunity to spend time with my buddy every week. Um, and then Oklahoma city, amazing. Definitely want to talk about that. The the college women's college world series was there. I've uh and uh I mentioned this while I was in Oklahoma City, man. But walking, you know, I was walking around Oklahoma City during the day, feeling, you know, feeling myself a little bit, shirt off, you know. And I I've just never seen so many good looking jacked lesbians in my entire life. With their dude, they they were jogging in packs and they had like their sleeveless shirts on. And I, do you know, I felt so self-conscious. I put my shirt back on. I'm like, these, these women are, because if you take a, a man's body in baseball, the, just by nature of what it is, they're always squatting or crouching yep. and they, their shoulders, they're doing a lot of, yeah. so they have kind of jack shoulders and like usually thighs and a bigger booty. That's who's jogging by me, dude. And I felt. I felt particularly out of shape around that. I was just like, God. And there was a woman in a Subaru with a bullhorn behind. No, there wasn't. There was no Subaru. But I wish left, <laughs> left, <laughs> left, I wish right, left. Just hanging out the Subaru with a bullhorn. <laughs> Either anyway. a Subaru or a Volvo. It's one of those. No, lesbian Subaru. Grandma drives a Subaru. Damn it. Damn it. I was about to say something, but I'm not gonna. Please don't. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> yeah, that would just on the off chance that that clip, not that my mom knows what a clip is or how to get it on the internet or watches the podcast, but just on the off chance, well, she might listen, man. Oh. Here's the thing: she's the most supportive person in the world. Agreed. 
And even if I said what I was about to say, she would pretend that she liked it. And she would say, that was really funny, honey. But, you know, she did say to my dad, I don't know what any of that means. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I'm making her sound like my Nana, but. Yeah, it's an interesting voice you have, yeah. Grandma. It is uh, not the one I would have chosen. And we didn't even talk about the fact that we didn't have luggage or clothes for three days. That's what I wanted to talk about for OKC. Like, well, I mean, thank God. That's, by the way, I think that's the second time you've made an executive decision to be like, we got to get off this plane. We got to find a new flight. Were they both right? Both. You're two for two. Yeah. That one was going to, to we were going to Dania Beach in February for yep. Valentine's Day weekend. Mm -hmm. And you were like, hey, the flight's delayed. I know how bad an American is at getting us new planes. We got to go hop on another flight. And we ran down literally two gates over. There was another plane. And we got on that. Literally went from the airport to the show. Yep. No, but, but no. That, that flight that we hopped off of that they told us to wait at the gate didn't get in until the next day. The next night. Yeah. Like it kept getting yeah. delayed, delayed. Had we stayed on that plane, we would have been on the tarmac for yeah. six plus hours. And like, then this one the same way. Listen, guys, I'm going to tell you something. Somebody travels a lot. If the airline says to you, hang out on the gate or uh, we're going to try to get a new airplane, yo, go get another flight. Yeah. Go, sure. You're going to go get another flight. If, if you can. We did it this time too. Remember I, they said, I said to the woman, I go, hey, we were on the tarmac in Austin and the weather in Dallas was crazy. Well, and we originally were supposed to fly into Dallas, but they hovered for 30 minutes because we couldn't land. Yep. And she was like, we're going to just leave you on the tarmac. And I was, I stood up and I was like, nah. I said, you're going to have to open the door and let us off the plane. And she said, let me ask the captain. I'm like, go ask the captain. But like, she goes, you know, your bag's going to be on the plane. I'm going, fine. But they'll make it there eventually. But I need, I have a show tonight in Oklahoma City. And by the way, some of those shows in Oklahoma City, that was some of my, uh, it's one of my favorite comedy weekends in a long time. For me too. Yeah. We did a lot of. A lot of tweaking for me. You did. You were you were amazing that weekend, dude. You did yeah. an amazing. I had a good amazing time. Job. I was a little punchy on Thursday. Yeah. Um, because I was just angry we didn't have our stuff. It yeah. was a long travel day, all that good stuff. And I went on stage actually in these shorts. I want to stand up and yeah, show you everybody. did. You went on stage because we had to go on stage in what our playing clothes were, and Jacob flies in short shorts. Yo, look at those gams. <laughs> Chicken legs. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like the real life chicken little in this. Yeah. Bitch. I, I um. Do you want me to show you my legs? No thanks. Uh, I, and so I don't want to blind our viewers. You showed up in those. I showed up in gray sweatpants. Yeah. It's not gray sweatpants season, everybody. No, it was, uh, it was definitely two shows for the people in the front row. Yeah. That's a that's hundred percent. Yeah. 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 It was, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, I was definitely a little punchy. The Q and a was super fun, but those Thursday shows, like if you're coming out on a weekday, knowing you have work the next day and you're coming to see us like comedy those, fan, comedy fan and Josh Wolf fans. Yeah. And look, for, here's my thing. Like, we talk about everything and we joke around about whatever. But I know if you're a Josh Wolf fan, you have a good sense of humor. 100%. And so there was, you know, some people, like a lot of that, a lot of the questions sometimes in the Q&A are people are like, oh, watch this. This is going to be super funny. Yeah. And it was great. And that always happens. But I was, for some reason, when I was punchy, my comedy improv brain was like, say that. And at that point in time, sometimes my brain is like, hey, first idea, best idea. And I, I just... I can't well, throw throwing punches. You keep kicking my lobster. You keep punch. you're over under my part of the. I'm not farther than this, dude. I'm sorry that I don't have legs that are under two and a half feet. You definitely have long legs. I'm just saying, I, I, if you put them under my te table, I'm, I might touch them. Oh, is this your table? This is my table. Oh, my side of the table. Oh, okay. Not were you table. not on my side of the table? This table have your name on it. Were you? I could put my name on it. Those, dude, my, my feet right now, where they are, are yeah. exactly where they were when you kicked me. And I'm nowhere near the middle. That is not true because my feet are exactly where they were. It's crazy because, like, you're fully extended and you. I am middle. not fully extended. I'm bent straight down. Yeah. yeah. Look, take a look. That's not extended. What are you talking about, extended? extended. You're extended. Your uh, brain's extended. I might I be know. shortened, actually. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we didn't have our. We ended up not getting our bags in OKC till Saturday afternoon. But we went and got some new clothes, and I bought some. Uh, I bought an LL Cool J crew neck that I'm super excited about. So it all worked out. I got a Dolly Parton shirt. Nailed it across the board. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed. It. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Uh, uh, but OKC, a great time, great crowd, great you. people. Thank you guys for coming out. We really appreciate it. Portland, don't forget about it. And everybody, remember Monday nights. 
Kimball's. And if you're going to be in Vegas over uh, July 4th weekend, uh, Jacob and I are performing in, in, at Kimball's that weekend. Uh, speaking of Portland, dude, am I the only one who's been looking forward to that pork belly for the last month? Super excited to be in Portland. Dude. Oh, my God. That I switched our hotels. To that hotel? No, a different uh, hotel. I, I have no idea. I just wanted to try a new hotel. Oh, facts. Dude, I'm I just Googled what hotel has the least amount of human shit in front of it. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, Portland's in the top three of like aggressive, of aggressive homeless people. I would go my top three, my number one for sure, Denver. Denver's got some <sighs> they do. aggressive, un, like unnecessarily aggressive. How do you people. know that? The first time we were there, I wasn't even doing comedy. It was just when we were doing the Q&A. I was doing like my PA stuff and it was 420 weekend and I had just turned 21. So I came with you on the road. We were at the downtown comedy works yeah amazing love it both the comedy works everything the clubs in denver are uh -huh. awesome and we were just walking through downtown denver and there's a dude and a and his i assume his wife or girlfriend holding signs that said having a bad day free hugs free prayers and i was like like look for me like religion believe in what you want i that's totally fine no judgment here i don't believe in shit yeah and when i see free prayers i'm like oh cool like it's like when the school shootings happen everything's like thoughts and prayers and i'm like the fuck is that going to do? Yeah. I just, I'm like, whatever. But to each his own. If that helps you, love it. I'm Go throughout your day. But a homeless dude had the same exact thought I did, but he let his intrusive thoughts win. And he went straight up to him in his face like, this is so fucking stupid. Like, you're an idiot. God isn't real. How is this going to help people? Like, You're judging all of Denver by that one dude? Well, I mean, they were all pretty loud, too. Also, with, with wait, no, mushrooms are legal in Portland. N no, in Vancouver. No, remember they just oh, de decriminalized in Denver too. Yeah, so I was, maybe that's why you're <sighs> judging. Now I will say downtown Denver does have some pre have some pretty loud ones, but that one that I can't believe we're judging it on that one dude. I mean, I feel like it. it Where are your other two? Uh, other two, my second would be L.A. Huh? Yeah, I've had some homeless people experience. Yeah. I've had some good ones. I've had some bad ones. Um, and then my last one I think would be. Portland. I go San Francisco, Portland, Austin. We didn't experience any homeless in Austin. Austin Sixth Street has those. Yeah, we did. Oh, oh, uh, those uh, dudes we bought the cereal for. Austin Sixth Street has the fast twenty-eight day later zombie type homeless. Seattle has the mouth open like Walking Dead. Crazy. Real slow moving. Yeah. But Austin has them 28 days. Zip, zip, zip. They'll sneak yeah. up on you, man. Well, I'm not going to lie, though. They're aggressive, too. Yeah. No, they, had, they, they, they were lighting shit on fire down on 6th Street. They're, they're aggressive. It's crazy. Uh, I was, uh, it's funny that you bring up the 28 days later. Like, I was, I was, on, the, uh, I was on the Naturals, the All Naturals pod last night with uh, Derek and Kyle. Uh, again, thank you guys for having me on. Little milestone for me. That's my first podcast. Yeah, by ever. yourself. By myself. And? Not with you. Dude, so much fun. Good guys. We had a great time. They're very much like us, where we start on one thing, and then we end up. But so much more fun with me, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you and I do it together, so much. Sure. More fun. Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> but, but yeah, it was a great time. Uh, dudes, they, this is what they really want to do. They put their time and their effort into it. And uh, super nice guys. And, yeah, it was a little milestone for me. First pod without you. It was, uh, it was a whole bunch of fun. We had a great time. Um, but we were talking about, for some reason, 28 Days Later or World War Z. And uh, if truthfully, if I think a zombie apocalypse is going to happen, the Walking Dead zombies don't make sense. Like, really. Why not? Because it's just... Uh, See, I think the exact opposite. Hear me out. Okay. Hear me out. You think it's more, makes more sense that the dead things are super fast. This is what I think. Because okay. the 28 Days Later zombies was a virus that was created that was then like, you know, that was, that somebody got but then, you know, it could infect other humans, but you didn't have to be dead and it didn't affect the, like it, it wasn't like you had to have a headshot to die. They were still like an huh. all, in 28 days later, you don't have to shoot the zombie in the head. Okay. You'll, you can shoot him in the heart because the body is still functioning around the heart and not the brain, okay. like, like the Walking Dead zombies are. The Walking Dead zombies, it was just like, yeah, they raised, like the, the raised from the ground typical zombie, like that just came out of nowhere. Yeah, but your heart's... <clears throat> In the 28 days later, your heart's not still pumping blood. And so rigor mortis sets in. Like, it doesn't make sense to me that the dead body moves 
more quickly. Like they're fast. They're faster than the regular folk. Well, that's what, I think it, it was the virus that was created that that infected, like, infected like still like if it, you and I were infected right now, it would still just take whatever our body could do and push it to that limit because the drive to go kill and 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 infect others. Yeah, but is, the rest of your body like it it gets creaky. Like so, if I'm getting the zombie virus, I'd rather have the 28 day virus than the Walking Dead virus. It's like if I'm getting AIDS, I'd like Magic Johnson AIDS. <laughs> Instead of the other AIDS. Because yeah, the Magic I mean, Johnson AIDS, you get like in you get to be you like you get in really good shape and you own a lot of businesses. And the other AIDS looks terrible. Well, uh, <laughs> that's, I, Ma- that's the Matthew McConaughey uh, AIDS. I don't want that AIDS. I don't think the Magic Johnson AIDS comes with the money. I think you have to have that prior. I, I agree with you, but he <laughs> but I think his business acumen, like, dude, he the businesses he's acquired post AIDS have been pretty impressive. But, but I also but, think him being a professional basketball player and having money probably helped. Having AIDS? No, probably helped with his business acumen. Yeah, sure. I was just making a joke. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, um, I was following up on it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was just... Uh, I think... Okay. I, I... I I think that it doesn't... I think the... Uh, zombies, like they've always been. Frankenstein... It's not like the $6 million man. Do you know who that is? I've heard of it. Like, we have the technology. Isn't that from the same? Yeah. Yeah. That's the only line I know from it. I'm close enough. Can I tell you how much better TV shows are? Well, I want to backtrack that. Sitcoms. So much better when I grew up. Yeah. TV better now. Definitely. That's so interesting. Because... Yeah, sitcom so much better, but TV because streaming has allowed for people to make better shows. Yeah, and technology. Like, but music was better when I was growing up. I mean, that's also debatable. Like, it's art, it's perspective. Yeah, but mine's right. My perspective. <laughs> I mean, the hip hop was better when I was growing up. Well, Run DMC is better than J Cole. Let's be honest. Relax over there. I mean, that's, that. Run DMC better than J Cole. Y- you know, cap. Stop the cap. Stop the cap. Stop the cap. LL Cool J better than Kendrick Lamar. That is definitely not true. LL Cool J ever won a Pulitzer Award for a rap album? Yeah, but Pulitzer's for writers. Man, that's a good point. Yeah, you just sat and proved my point. Yeah, right there. But, but but not everybody who won a Pulitzer Prize, like the Beatles never won a Pulitzer Prize. Point taken. That's exactly what I mean. My music's better. Are you, are you, would you say that Taylor Swift is bigger than the Beatles? More relevant than the Beatles? I don't. I bet you she's had as many. Uh, 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 here's the thing. Like, her world tours, like, she just, there's a there's a a, a soccer stadium in Spain. It hosts Madrid. Uh, España. España. It hosts Real Madrid. Uh, it's called the uh, Santiago Bernabeu. It seats 80,000 plus. She just sold that out two nights in a row. Mm. I love, I would pick the Beatles over Taylor Swift just because I don't really like Taylor Swift or her music. But I, I, I'm not trying to bag on the Beatles. I don't think the Beatles, the Beatles. I don't think the Beatles could do that. No, I, but how do you now define bigger or more relevant? There's more people now. There, there is easy. It's easier to get information out about shows now. I don't know how many number one hits the Beatles have, but I think the, I think Taylor Swift has had twelve. I mean, I, I, know, and, I know this for a fact. Drake's got more number one hits than the Beatles. Yeah, but Drake's music is doo-doo stew, dude. It's straight it's up doo doo stew. I'm so not the demo, man. The, I'm not a 12-year-old girl. Neither am I. Relax. I'm not, I'm not emo. I was. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> none of that shit. <sighs> And I and I don't be, I don't I don't buy his tough guy act. That kind of bothers me. He, he's not a tough guy. I know. when he He's tri- like the original sad boy. When he tries to be tough, like, I don't buy that. I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm sure that I would have been invited to his bar mitzvah. You know, like, he, f- he was bar mitzvah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. Okay. Um, but, but like, I don't buy that tough guy. Okay. I do want, before we go into the, uh, Caitlin Clark and the seven M stuff, okay. hit me with the term. Okay. Um, actually, sorry. I have one more thought on the zombie apocalypse. Okay. Sorry. My, 
I actually I take it back. The one that I think is the most realistic is The Last of Us. Huh. Okay. For sure. But they're so fast, dude. And but so much harder but, to kill. But they're mutated. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. Like, it's, a, it's a virus created inside of yeah. a grain factory that then is shipped across the I world. I agree. With that, that that one makes the most sense to me but logically. And harder to of, kill. Yeah, because it's a type of fungus. Like, yeah, it, that makes sense to me too. That, and also, by the way, you know that fungus is actually real. You're going right? to want to talk about that. <laughs> Scary. Have you watched all of The Last of Us? Yeah, yeah. The season, they finally just dropped a teaser for season two. But dude, I can't wait. Can't wait. Your mom won't watch it. I can't wait. We I watched, Jacob and I watched Atlas too. Uh, can I, I, can I, I, watched is a term used lightly. Can I give you my review of Atlas? <laughs> yeah, it's bad. I, first of all, I, it was like, it was like they looked at early 90s action films. And was like, we need a couple of sayings. We need we need to set up four things that are all going to come back in the last two minutes of the show, of the movie. She was so affected, dude. So there's a scene where she's, at the end, where she's hugging the machine that she fell, that she loves, whatever. It, it's so difficult to watch. I have, I'm so mixed. I have such mixed feelings on her. Because I love her and I love her drive and I love her booty. But by the way, you should probably say who we're talking about. Oh, uh, Jennifer Lopez. There you go. And I love, dude, how f- no nonsense she is. I love that when I met her, she went straight alpha on me. I fucking love all of that. I love how strong and powerful she is. I hate that she keeps trying to. <laughs> <laughs> act. Although, in that George Clooney movie, she was amazing. I wish she'd stop. I don't know what I wish because I'm not a fan of her art per se. I'm just not. I'm not a fan of her music because she doesn't really sing and, yeah. and she's a performer. She's a great yeah. performer. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm, I'm just not. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of her. I'm just not a fan of her. Atlas. And I was on Mushrooms and I couldn't sleep and yeah, I ended up sleeping in the lobby and the people who worked there thought I was... <laughs> Every time they went they, to wake him up, he had to hold up his key card. Like, I'm staying here, I promise. Yeah, and then I, you know what I did? Because they were at the front desk and I was kind of over the corner. And so what I would try to do is I would look out the window and pretend like I was awake, but do the hand on the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my, you know, I kept doing the. Kept doing the nod. Yeah. yeah so it like looked like you were. Ghost, blowing a ghost. Oh, I was going to say strung out, but okay. <laughs> cool. Pat. <laughs> that works too, I guess. That's how our minds work, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Guys, I do want to give a special shout out to Best Day Brewing. It is a beer that I cannot get enough of. Now, I call it a beer because it tastes like beer, but it has no alcohol in it. You know your boy Josh is, is not drinking anymore, but I do miss the, the nostalgia of cracking open a beer in a do can. <laughs> I think it gets worse every time. <laughs> Oh, crack it open a beer. I do mi- miss the nostalgia of sitting down with Jacob and, and you know, and cracking a beer open. And we get to do that now. We do it in the green room. We do it in my backyard. We do it on the patio. Uh, and the best thing about Best Day is that it tastes delicious. Not only does it taste delicious, but Jim, the dude who owns it, uh, is a really good dude, small business owner who is keeping Best Day's quality high by not selling it off to one of these big corporations. They've been trying to buy them out. They can't because he's keeping the quality and passing the savings on to you. It is an amazing beer. It tastes so good. I'm down with that IPA. I like it so much, guys. Check out Best Day Brewing. We're going to get you a uh, code here pretty soon so you guys can have a little bit of discount tea on it. What do you get to say? Uh, yeah, like, we're not much drinkers. Like, you know, for me, if I do drink, it's, you know, it's in like when I drink with him, because for, you know, for the longest time, we didn't, you know, it, you know, it partake in the marijuana together. So what we would do is we would sit and we would pop up on a best day and it was a, uh, it was always nice, like just to be able to to sit there because we we never really drank together. We drank once on my twenty first birthday, but that was really it. And uh, you know, a lot of kids are like, "Oh yeah, when was the first time you had a beer with your dad?" And I'm like, "Never." Um, so we get to I get it's like a you know one of those things that we get to do together. Um, 
Love it. Just fun and nostalgic. So yeah, bestdaybrewing.com. Go check them out and we'll have a code for you guys soon. Um, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Um, uh, all right. So listen. So you want to do this Urban Dictionary term? Yeah. So I love the Urban Dictionary. Um, you know, I remember looking through it once with my friend Sarah Colonna and we were trying to find terms that we thought were really funny. And my favorite term that I found that she couldn't guess what it was. Oh, I'll give it to you. You try to guess and then you give me yours. Okay. Okay. So the term was double puddle. And it made me laugh so uncomfortably when I heard it. But double puddle, I'll give you five guesses. Uh, how about three guesses? Two questions. And two questions. Okay. I agree. My first question yes. is, well, I feel like I know the answer to this already, but I'm okay. going to ask it anyways. Okay. Is it something sexual? Yes. Okay. And does it have to deal with both urine and cum? No. Oh, not urine. Oh, interesting. That was the one I for sure thought yeah. it was going to be, actually. <laughs> huh, okay. That took me for a turn. So I think this is a good example of, I could have just said no, but I think because we're not, we're not trying to do like a 20 question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I gave you a little more. So just remember that when, when I'm guessing. All right. Oh, so you can ask questions or make guesses. I think you just get five in, okay, in total. Okay. okay, okay. Okay, so does not have to deal with urine. Okay. Uh, sexual act. Uh, does it involve two people of the same sex? Does it matter? It does not involve two people of the same sex. Does it involve... Wait. Is it this just a one person activity? It is a one person activity. You have one last. This is it. It's a weird one person activity. Um I don't I, I don't know. It, when you have explosive diarrhea and you you're shitting, but you're also masturbating at the same time. It's when you come and cry at the same time. Oh it's double, double Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> The double puddle, man. I love That's that funny. one. All, All right. right, hit me, hit me. What do you All got? right. Okay. <laughs> this one is called Charizarding. 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 Is it a sexual act? Yes. Does it, does it involve feces? No. No? No. Well, okay. Can I give you a little something? Yes. Charizard. Right, is Charizarding. A, is a... Dragon type Pokemon. Yes. Okay. Take that information. I did. I thought maybe the, the tail was a, like a little bit of poop. Oh, that's an interesting thought, but no. Okay. <laughs> All right. So dragon. So we need Charizard somebody. Okay. And it's a sexual act that does not have to do with feces. Correct. Okay. Does it have to do with fire? Yes. Oh, <laughs> why did you get excited oh, about that? Because I'm closer to the truth. Uh, You're a freak. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Fire. No feces sex. Correct. Okay. Is it when you light your penis on fire and stick it inside of a vagina? No. Am, am but I? But the lighting something on fire part in that true. area is correct. Okay. In the. So by the way, that's. That's four. Yes, I know, dude. I know, I'm, I'm counting for myself. Oh, okay. okay. Jesus, relax over there. Okay. I'm excited. You know how much I love these games and I like to win. You're not going to win. I'm close. I'm, I got fire and penis. I didn't get penis. That's not no, what you said. No, I said in that area. Okay. Uh, but you're not going to tell me if it's man or woman in that area? It's between a man and a woman. I know it's between a man well, and a but woman. The sexual act could be. Oh, the sexual act. I thought you meant the fire was either on a man or a woman. <laughs> I was like, yeah, dude. No, I know we're not talking the, about the a sexual. Horse. The sexual act is a is a heterosexual couple. Yes. Okay. So the last, it's when, it's when, and it, the penis is not on fire. No. This dick is on fire. That's an STD. Yeah, that's <laughs> hilarious. Should get that checked out. Hold on. Oh, I I already do sing a parody to that song, don't I? No, I don't. This dick is on fire. I don't, I don't. think so. I'm gonna I'm gonna sound what I do. All right, great. Okay. Um, okay. Last guess, everybody, is a Charizard. It's gotta do with the penis because that no Charizarding. 
Charizard. Charizarding. Okay, you ready? Here it is. Here's yeah. the guess. When you, a woman, you know how you blow fire? Okay. And then she gives the dude a blowjob. Charizarding. Honestly, good guess. Very good guess. That's not a bad one, right? Not even close. Okay. Not close? Fire and sex? Fire, fire, fire. But the first thing, the oral sex. This is what you mentioned. It's I'm talking about like actual... Yeah, I, I did sex first. I said, dude lights his dick on fire and then has sex with a woman. Right. Uh, anyways, I don't know why we're arguing about. Okay. <sighs> okay, so Charizarding is when, uh, as the guy, you light a girl's pubes on fire and then you <laughs> put it out with your jizz and flap your arms and say, you don't have enough badges to train me. <laughs> <laughs> that is a top tier <laughs> Urban Dictionary term. Top tier shit. Like, I love that. That. And they use it in a sentence. Ready? Yeah. Ch Charizarding with Jenny was a night I'll never forget. <laughs> Who's got enough jizz to put out a fire? Right? <laughs> that's like some Peter North shit right there. Like, that's, that's wild. Ooh, I don't even know if semen puts out fire. Is it flammable? How much is flame semen? retardant? Did yeah, you call uh, me a flame retard? I said flame retardant. Oh, I mean, I might now. <laughs> I thought you said, are you flame retarded? And I'm like, I don't think so. Um, so, okay. So this dude, who, first of all, do, do, does hair light on fire like that? Or does it kind of melt around? You ever seen? You ever seen those like videos of those girls going to blow out the candles yeah, and their hair lights on yeah, fire? Saw, oh, it it saw, definitely lights like that. I saw Michael Jackson's hair on fire, light on fire. Did you ever see that clip? No. It was during a, a Pepsi commercial. He was shooting a Pepsi, Pepsi commercial, and uh, his hair just whoa. whoa. Yeah. My favorite Michael Jackson. And then clip. seven little kids came out and put it out with their. No, dude, they did not Charizard Michael Jackson. Relax. My favorite Michael Jackson clip is that one where he gets on that that little like that like lifted crane, right? And he goes like super high in the air and yeah. that fan runs up the crane and gets onto the platform and everyone is like, oh, Michael really loves his fans. I'm like, no, that's a liability. Like he's holding on to him so that Michael doesn't get sued. Listen, like, I love that clip. It's crazy. There's I, no for real. Never seen fans like that for any other artist ever. I would say Michael Jack because the difference is, dude. Yeah, I bet you they're pretty crazy Swifties. But the difference... that kind of crazy. The difference is, dude, is that the amount of superstars and your exposure to them was limited. So to see Michael Jackson, he, he wasn't on... There was no TikTok. There was no way to go home and see him all the time. It was like... You had to see him in the wild. Dude, it was like seeing, you know, Paul Bunyan or Babe Ruth. Like a mythical... Thing is it one of those people real and one isn't? Uh, I think Babe Ruth real. I think I know Babe Ruth real. Yeah, yeah. Not and think. I think Paul Bunyan real, but maybe not eight feet tall, and with a giant ox and a giant axe. Let's take a guess if Paul Bunyan was real. I'm going to had to be based on a real person, right? I'm but saying that's like saying. Greek mythology is based on a real person. No, Greek mythology is based on gods. R right, and but Paul Bunyan being eight feet with a giant ox and a giant axe is kind of like a god among among men. Uh, can Do you know you, what I mean? Yes. Can you uh, Google Paul Bunyan? Yeah, let's Google. Was Paul Bunyan real? I'm saying based on real dude. Paul Bunyan was a big man. He rocked around the land. He carried his giant axe and he had it in his hand. He'd swipe at the trees walking by. He'd knock them down again. He'd walk them back. He'd chop them up. He'd light them in his pen. Hey, Paul Bunyan was... I'm just singing until you're ready. Was that real? No. I'm oh, just, it was pretty good, though. Oh, I just... Yeah, I just... Oh, no, that was, I, I thought you were going <laughs> off like a childhood song. Oh, you thought that was a Paul Bunyan song? Yeah, yeah. I was just riffing. Oh, I... I <laughs> I didn't read it because I was letting you go. I thought you were having a moment. Oh, no, I it was that was my Jeopardy music. Ba -na -na. But I, from now on, when you're looking something up, I'm just going to make up a song. Love it. Okay. Um, although Paul Bunyan and Babe, the Blue Ox, are fictional, the results of tales told around... Uh, uh, historians believe Bunyan was based on, on a, a real... large part of an actual lumberjack. Had to be. Fabian Fournier, a French-Canadian timberman. Ooh, I'm going to spell Fabian Fournier. 
F A B I I F A B I A N Fabian. Okay, correct. Now Fournier, it, it's French, right? Yeah. F O U, because those fucking French always throw a U in there. F O U R I F O U R N I E R. Fournier. Fabian Fournier. By oh, the way. But so ready for this? Another one says Paul Boys, Paul Bunyan stories are inspired by Bon Jean, an actual French Canadian hero. Who's Bon Jean? Bon Jean actually sounds like a pretty dope musician. Is Paul Bunyan a cryptid? You know what a cryptid is? Encrypted? No, a cryptid. A space cryptid. cryptid. I don't know what that means. A cryptid. Like a cryptid is like Mothman or Bigfoot or... So what I'm saying is I think he was based on real human and then, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it says they historians think he was based off a real person, but... He had to have been... But why not just use Fournier Fournier as the name? That's way better. What, Fontenelle Fournier? Fabian Fournier. By the way, all good. All the fav- the Fournier brothers. I hope there was Fournier, Fontenot, and Fountain Fournier. And I, I hope they ruled the land. Do you know what I mean? I hope they, I hope they walked about the Canadian Rockies. They were the Fournier brothers. Bum, 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 bum. I'm on one today, dude. <laughs> I can tell. Here's the thing. Usually you don't like this. Here's the thing. He has this type of energy because he actually ate some food before this. I did. That's how I know you have energy is because usually around this time, it's like you come from the gym or like errands or whatnot. So you don't have time to eat. So sometimes you're not sometimes, but like a little bit of the time, you're a little punchier. Energy's a little down, but I know you have some energy because I know you ate a decent time before this podcast. Listen, dude, here's what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I didn't get my hand-eye coordination from you. <laughs> I just, my mouth was open too, dude. That's what she said. Uh, um, okay. So listen. That was funny. Yeah. That was unfortunate for me. Um, unfortunate for me and the viewers. And Matt. <laughs> guys, by the way. Everybody listen. Um, I'm going to release this special on YouTube. Uh, not the one that's coming out, um, one that I shot over quarantine that I've released on YouTube one time before and I took it down right away because I was so, I'm so, okay, look, I'm a comic and I filmed the special over, over quarantine in front of 20 people socially distanced with masks on. So not only could I not hear them when I was telling my jokes, you all can't hear them when you're listening. So it's so weird to listen to jokes and not hear any, not just not hear laughter, but know you're in a room, right? Sounds it's not, like, sounds like the open mics I go to. Yeah, kind of, except I'd be putting this on my YouTube page, but I'm going to put it out there. I'm finally at a point now, guys, and I feel actually good about this, where I, I'm, I'm not going to start qualifying. You know, I did it. I love doing it. I, it was such a fun thing for me to do, such a fun writing experience because I rewrote my first ever CD. And, uh, and there are some jokes on there that if I, you know, that are cancelable, I would, I guess there's some people that would say that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm going to release that here coming up. Matt and I are trying to decide when, when we're going to do that, but pretty psyched. Um, and also just so you know, if you got a message from me on X or Twitter or whatever the fuck. Uh, and you see me out there with some crypto stuff. Look, man, I'm, uh, I've avoided it all together, except this is fun. This particular one that somebody approached me about is fun because it's all about community and I'm, it's all based around my comedy. I'll show it to you afterwards, but okay. it's, it's actually kind of fun. Um, if anybody gets any uneasy feelings about it, reach out to me. This is my first foray into it. And I had heard a lot of bad stuff about it. So I did a bunch of good research on this. And this is actually just seems like a ton of fun. The only bad thing about crypto is like, it's just super volatile. Yeah. Like that's, that's the one thing for people. It's like, <laughs> bless you. you. It's not, it's, but it's not straight crypto. It's 
tokens where you're going to trade tokens amongst the community. It's fun. Okay. All right. Oh, anyway. also for the for the special you're putting out, are you putting some like old like laugh track sitcom laugh tracks in there or like what's up? What's funny? Might be kind of funny to just throw some or like some like ooh like just like like obviously it's still like your work, but uh, I don't know. It might add a little something else. It add it. like obvious. Uh, like an obvious laugh track? Yes. Yeah. Like one that's like like your sitcom laugh track. It's exactly. I'm not, I'll attach it and see what it sounds like. Might be kind of funny. Might be crazy. Might be kind of funny, actually. That's what I'm obvious. saying. Like, yeah. And also because like... Or if like, you cut it, to crowd shots of people who are clearly not there. Yeah. 100%. Like you could... You could... There's a lot of things I think you could do with it. Because like, you're still not hitting at your comedy being bad, but like you're just adding some more just like effect I, to it. It might I be kind love, of fun. Like you cut to a shot of the Coliseum and just like 30,000 people. <sighs> Or you just cut to the like to like four of the people in the audience and you see no reactions, There's, but you have like a crazy laugh track on it. That's funny too. Do you know what I mean? I don't like, think there are any shots of the audience. But you know what I mean? Like yep. stuff like that. Might be kind of funny. I agree. By the way, I, I want you to notice the color t shirt I'm wearing. Yeah. No sweaty guy. Nice. I, I guys, so just so you know, sweaty guy, I'm not sure if I've ever brought up sweaty guy in this podcast. It's Josh Wolf's alter ego. Sweaty guy's my alter ego. Sweaty guy is if you wonder why I, people think I like I'm a diva and I change clothes in between shows for the meet and greet, a new outfit for the late show, it's because I sweat a lot. Yeah. And my alter ego's name is Sweaty Guy. And when I say I sweat a lot, guys, I'll sweat through a shirt and a jean jacket. Easy. My, my favorite Sweaty Guy moment, can I tell them about what we did on the Joshua Show and Shark After Dark in order to oh, get through that? Yeah. Well, it was the tape. It wasn't the tape. It was the... <coughs> like a the tampon? Pad, the pad. Yeah, they had to uh, sew maxi pads into his armpit slot on his t-shirts for wardrobe so that when we filmed, you wouldn't see Sweaty Guy. Can I tell you... The and by the way, it worked. Yeah. Can I tell you the very first time... Okay, I was, I was on My Name is Earl. And I... It was the first time I'd ever met Sweaty Guy. And I was wearing a khaki shirt and I was like, oh shit. Because I was right when I walked into the trailer, I was wearing my t-shirt and I just started sweating, sweating, sweating. I'm like, oh shit. I didn't know what to do. So I asked wardrobe for an X pair of socks. They gave me an X pair of socks and I went to the grip guys and I go, hey, do you have any duct tape? And I duct taped around socks, but I duct taped them on. Oh, that hurt taking off. So I go into wardrobe after. And I go, hey, I need some help. She was like, yeah. I go, I need help taking some off. She was like, yeah, whatever. I take off my shirt. She was like, what the fuck is that? I go, I was sweating. And she said, I would have sewed maxi pads. But she said, we do that with like 50% of the people who come on. I was like, no way. She said, yeah, people. Yeah. So I, it's but not, the. Not just you. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's, yeah, that that's one of my favorite moments. Like just like favorite Joshua moments. Let's, I'm going to give you the. Sure, the 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 option. What do you want to talk about? Uh, uh, Caitlin Clark, the dance cult, or the or Pride Month? Because you really don't know what my take is on any of them. No, I mean I know what your take is on Caitlin Clark. Yeah, but I have more than one. I think you and I will differentiate a little bit on Caitlin Clark. Oh, right, you want to start there? Yeah, go ahead. You go first. My first thing is this: I'm not going to pretend to be some dude who cares about the WNBA. Like all these fucking people who are chiming in or well, Clayton Clark this or uh, Angel Reese this. Or the, I'm not going to be up here pretending like I know anything about the league or the women who run it. I'm not going to, or, or the women who are in it because it's run by dudes. I'm not going to pretend like these women need my help to come to their aid to stand up for their good, good. And I'm not going to do, I, it's so funny to me. I see a lot of people screaming, you know, it's because the, they hate her because she's white. You know, first of all, there's a lot of white women in the league and Brianna Stewart is pretty good. And Kelsey Plum is pretty good. And Sabrina Ionescu. Ionescu. Pretty good. And, and And here's what I would say. And I don't, like I said, I don't, I think it's much ado about nothing. I think the people, it's funny to me to listen to the people talk about how it's racist, it's because she's white, are also the same people who say to black people, 
Why you always got to bring up race? Do you know what I'm saying? A hundred percent. So why you got to bring up race on this? Here's what it seems like to me. It's and, and, and I would, and like, I don't know any of these people, but you have these grown women who have been clamoring for respect and athletes who have been clamoring for respect and chartered flights and all this stuff. Um, for years, 24 years, and never had any of it or any attention. This woman comes in, and all of a sudden, she's the reason, right? Yeah. You, she, look, man, every, rookies get bumped in every league. Yeah, it's, it's like they're, you're welcome to the league. Yo, and when you are physically not as strong, look at Sean Brad, Bradley or any of these dudes who go into the NBA super skinny mm -hmm. as, as rookies. What they do to those people is they body them the fuck up because your skill set might be more than mine, but you know what isn't? You, I am a man and you are a fucking 18 year old. Yeah. Or I'm a man and you're 20. Yeah. So I'm going to body you the fuck up. They yeah. bodied Kevin Durant up, dude. Honest too. Dude. And so like they are bodying her up. That's it. You know, so I don't understand. It's much ado about nothing to me. Do you know what the only thing that people aren't talking about that I just don't understand? Mm. How none of her teammates have come out. How none of her teammates, when she got knocked down, I know it's a different league and I know Charles Oakley and Jordan and that it's a different time, but there are enforcers and there are people that come off the bench, hockey, basketball. Yo, if you hit my dude in baseball, you know, somebody on your team's getting hit. Yeah. So that is the only, and I, and, and, I'm not saying that any of her fouls are over the top, just from the ones I've seen. I don't, they look like hard fouls. Yeah. Okay. But if you got that dude or that girl or that woman on your team, somebody from your team, when she got knocked down the other day, nobody stuck up for her. Nobody. Nobody. So and that's, that would be my only thing. Other than that, I think it's much ado about nothing. I think people screaming racism are not helping. I think, if you look, man, or if you think you're sticking up for Caitlin Clark, I can tell you right now, I don't think you're helping her. I think you're hurting her. Let this young woman play basketball. Let uh, them play basketball. A hundred percent. And I, I, you know, actually, now that I think about it, we, I probably agree a, a little more with you than I thought I was going to. Like, have like you're like you're right. Like, I would understand that also that kind of resentment and anger, having been in the league for so long, not getting the recognition you deserve for still being a professional athlete, one of the, you know, 1% best yeah, in the cheers. world. Yeah. Like, not every woman can go play professional WNBA basketball. Like, and so I would get the anger and resentment for this girl who just comes into the league and then all of a sudden, like, the WNBA is 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 more watched and more recognized yeah. and, and stuff like that. But I do agree, like, watching her... That foul, it, look, that foul was not that bad. It's a like, hip check, dude. When somebody in a column yeah. wrote something about that, that's assault on the street. No, on the street, she doesn't fall down to get a foul. Yeah. On and, the street, she just stumbles. And also, you want to know what they didn't show prior to that? Is Caitlin Clark in that girl's ear talking yeah, shit. Dude, she's but, a shit talker. Yes. Good and for guess her. what? Yeah, guys, look. Professional sports. I've never played professional sports. I played pickup sports all the time. I played in high school, whatever. We talk shit. That's how it happens. You're competitors, and, dude. You're and, and at the end of the day, you shake hands and say, hey, great game. You leave it on the court. When it goes, for me, the only problem is when it goes anywhere else off the court is when it starts to get a little out of hand. However, with the media only asking other girls questions about Caitlin Clark, I'd be pissed the fuck off too. E yes, I get that. Also, thank you for bringing this attention to the league. I will say a hundred percent. I will say the comments from some of the women, like what does she bring besides three pointers? Same girl, by the way. Yep. I know. But, uh, uh, angel Reese, some of that stuff. And I'm giving angel Reese a pass for this reason. What's she 21? Yeah. Something like that. <sighs> Look, she's, you're never going to be able to tell me she's not jealous, which is fine. She's 21. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's not a great look. Magic and Bird didn't get along very well at the beginning either. And I don't know, to give Angel Reese like that, and I don't know enough about the basketball, but she she doesn't seem to be, as far as talent-wise, as good as a couple of the women who were drafted this year. So I don't know why she's being elevated so much outside of the fact that she's associated with Caitlin Clark. 
No, also, I think also because she played for the University of Maryland for her first two years yeah. and then transferred to LSU. And in her first season with LSU, they won that national championship. Yeah, I remember. And they beat Caitlin Clark. And it was like... Yeah, and she did the whatever. And the... Yep. And by the way, dude, I don't have a problem with any of that. And neither it's, did Caitlin Clark. Yeah. In the rematch in the Final Four this year, Caitlin Clark was like, look, I got, I got nothing against Angel Reese. She's a competitor. Yeah. And look, like competitors compete. That's, that's the bottom line. Here's the thing. So stop, everybody, stop putting your sauce on what you think should bother people. Right. That doesn't... A hundred percent. My thing, though, I will say is like, a hundred percent, I can understand the resentment and the anger for other of the women athletes in the WNBA. But at the same time with that resentment and anger, and I'm just spe speaking how I would think, you have to somewhat be a little, not grateful, grateful is not the right word, but, but I'm going to use grateful, grateful that she's brought attention to this league. She's, she's bringing fans. They're selling out games. Like Huge. it's not only bringing attention to the league, but bringing an economy to other parts like of the country, which is yes. awesome. And she's an inspiration to like all these little girls growing up watching that they can do whatever. This girl is the top scorer in division one history, men or women. Yeah. That is inspirational to I show agree. that it doesn't matter who you are. If you're putting your foot forward. Just go, yeah. just, you know, shooters got to shoot. And that's what Caitlin Clark has always done. It, so for me, it's like the resentment and the anger I get, but there has to be eventually, I think after this year, there will be a little more respect for Caitlin Clark. I, I think agree. also Caitlin Clark takes time, dude. Yeah. Caitlin Clark will, will also adjust and, but she's also, you know, she's calm, cool, collected. She's really good in front of media, dude. Like, but here's the thing. Like, I, I don't know why everyone's pretending like they all of a sudden care. You don't give a shit. It's another social hot button issue that everybody's chiming in on. And I am, I don't know. I haven't watched enough WNBA games in the past to know if that's how physical the women usually are. I will say, I think the women's game is a little more physical than the men's game. They let them body them up a little more. I mean, you watched Candace Parker and how she played like, I think just from what I've piece. seen, it looks like they body up a little more. But I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm an expert on the league or these players. or And I'm not going to white knight it and jump in like they need my fucking... They don't need... No. The only thing that alarmed me is that nobody came to help. Her. That's the big one. Is like But that fucked me up. I was like, Ike. And does that mean... And is that because she's not even liked by the people on her team? Yeah. Or is it just because... Again, different game, different, you know, it, and it wasn't like a clothesline or no. something vicious. It was, uh, it was like if, if, she, if Caitlin had done it back, it would have been, it's like a dance move, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and I, I'm, I resent people being like, they hate her because she's straight and she's white. I just, get the fuck out of yo, here. Kelsey Plum, both straight and white and a, in a fucking great basketball player. Showed her. She, great basketball player. Nobody's hating. I will say, though, I, I, I think maybe like on that note of no one came to help her, here's the thing. I'll get on Kelsey Plum and the Aces. Like, I've seen, like, I, like highlights. We watch so much sports center. Do you know what I mean? On the road. Yeah. So I see, and also I'm up later than you, so I see just more things. There are times, like, on that Aces team where someone's been knocked over and all starting five swarm around that I'm person. I'm just saying, dude. No, that's what I'm saying is yeah. that, like, I'm furthering that fact of maybe she's not even liked. Who knows? By her own team. Again, but not speaking for anybody. Just thoughts. Yeah. Who knows? Um, okay. I, I, I want to say one last thing. And, and uh, then we'll... Let me just say this, everybody, about Pride Month. It, I have seen more stuff this year about fucking Pride Month. And, and, and if, a, if a company mentions Pride, they're woke and people are... I... I, I I don't understand why a group of people having a month bothers you. I I just can't quite understand who, oh, I'm going to see that rainbow all month. Like, what is it that bothers you so much that, and here's what really gets me, when businesses uh, acknowledge it and for people to get mad at that business, about being woke guys it's a business so so can you google how many gay people are in the united states 
It's a business. It's just like I didn't understand when people get so mad at Bud Light. Are you saying everybody who drinks Bud Light is a white dude? Cool. Well, I'm going to try to branch out and reach out to this other group of people. That doesn't mean I don't want you drinking my beer. If you're a business, you try to get as many people as you can to populate and to uh, purchase things from your fucking business. How many gay people? Uh, I'm not finding anything more recent than 2022. Okay, hit me. It doesn't give me an actual, it just says 7.1% of, of, the, of the states. Okay. So guys, 7.1%. So if you're saying, and that's probably low because some people probably didn't. It right? was also two years ago. Okay. So I mean like so probably more than that now. If you're like this woke, no, that is millions and millions and millions of customers. And I'm not sure why if they advertise to these customers, it bothers you so much. It's, it's like. When people, guys who hate gay people so much, if you're worried so much about what somebody else is doing in the bedroom, you want to be in that bedroom. It makes no sense to me, guys, yeah. why we're so worried about what other people have or are doing. Black History Month, great, guys. Bring up the months. Who's got months? That's what I was going to say, though. The Bring people up the who, months. The people who hate Pride or don't like Pride Month are the same people who think that... Bring up the months. But, but here's my thing, guys. Like, And I understand... What do you mean, bring up the months? Like, like, Isn't like, it... How? What would you Google? What, like, uh, what are the... Uh, that's what I'm saying. I don't know what I would Google for that. Figure it out. I just don't understand why it bothers you so much. I've always said just because you're not included doesn't mean you're excluded. Right. Okay. Right. So I'm, what I'm seeing is it's generally white people who are bummed out. It, okay. About uh, the black history month and about the gay it's straight, but, but guys, but, but don't, if you don't want to participate, don't, don't participate. If, if you don't want to go to a parade, don't go to parade. You're the fucking side. I don't, if you, I, I just don't understand why it bothers you. Why do they get a month? What, are, okay, so what do they get? Who, what, so, who oh, the, by the way, who the fuck cares? By the way, what are they getting for the month? Are they getting a stimulus check? Are they getting something that you're not getting? No. Do you need a pat on the back, Joseph? Joseph. <laughs> I just don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't understand. Do you need a hug or some attention? I'm not sure why this bothers people so much. Yeah. I yeah. would love to hear it in the comments, man. I'm genuinely curious why that acknowledgement bothers people. If I got to be honest, I don't even want to see it in the comments because it's going to be just I, I don't care. Yeah, but that's fine. That's um, fine. That's so fine. January is uh, Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month and Dry January. Okay. All right. Sure. I don't see anyone protesting that. Nope. Uh, Black History Month for February. Yep. We had National Bird Feeding Month. Listen, dude, why? This is where you should get mad. Not that this group of people who have fought for rights and continue to be marginalized get a month, but the fucking bird feeders, if a white, a white people, let's get together and try to grab March. Why do they, why do the bird feeders? Because the bird feeders are the white people. That's true. What you got a month, about? everybody. Yeah, there's probably no. And by the way, they don't have they don't have just a month. They ha they they have white I, privilege. That's, yeah. that is their it's their life. That's it, like they don't need we don't need a month. Like, and, and by the way, guys, before I, you hit me with your woke comments, I'm the furthest from woke. I just don't know why you guys are such fucking snowflakes about other people having months. It is it's so funny. funny. Like, it's like they also those are the. Those for the Pride Month, like when people get mad about it, they're mad. They're like, "Oh, these are snowflakes. Why do they need their own month?" You're the snowflake for getting mad about yeah, it. it. Like, but well, I don't get it. it. You're, you're uh, letting people live rent free in your head for it, no reason. And it's great. Um, March is National Colon Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, that the whole month is awareness. Well, there's like in the in the UK, it's a Brain Tumor Awareness Month. Okay, we'll take the colon. There's What's Irish next? American Heritage Month. Well, mustache well, Mustache March. Women's History Month. Like give me to April. Uh, April. Wait, Women's History Month is March. Yes, that's below mustache. Two below mustache. <laughs> it's actually second from the bottom. The one at the bottom is Youth Art Month. Oh, it's probably alphabetical. It is okay. <laughs> uh, April. April has a ton of shit. Nah, just hit me with the big one. <sighs> 
Arab How Amer- many? Uh, do- so that is what, read April and then we're going to be done. Arab American Heritage Month. Okay, that they get they get a month. Okay, Cancer Control Month. They already got one. That seems real vague. vague. Cancer control. Yeah, it sounds like you're. It sounds like you're trying to like cancer control them and put them in a. It's okay. weird. Uh, Confederate History Month. <laughs> again, White People Month. Again, everybody, you got one. Bird feeding and Confederate. Everybody, come on. Fly the flag. I don't see you guys flying your flags in April. Financial Literacy Month? I don't even know what that means. Yeah, that's one of those things. You know when there's a saying where I understand both words independently? But not but what they mean together. Together, yeah, I understand, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jazz Appreciation Month? Yeah. No. But Matt- the, the gays already have a month. Matt- <laughs> <laughs> that's gay. Mathematics Awareness Month? Nope. I don't think mathematics needs any awareness. Yeah. If I'm be so what's honest. the biggest, so what's the most important one we've passed so far? Uh, probably these next two would okay. be National Child Abuse Prevention Month. That's probably a good one. And Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Okay. All right. May's even longer. No, don't get to Good me. God. So, so it, the month can be represented by more than one thing. Well, also in different countries. Like in the UK, it means but, something but, but, else. But like, we just want the US. And that's yeah, all yeah. US? Uh, no, some of these are Canada. Some of these are UK. Uh, some of these are Philippines. But like all, unless you see it in quotations on the right of it, it's Philippines. Was there a National Nurses Month? Flores de Mayo. Flores de Mayo. That's flowers of May. Dude, by the way, can I, I tell guess. you? What, can I tell you what I just recognized out on the fucking two fifteen out there? Hmm. There's Green Valley exit, right? Yep. And then there's Valle Verde, which is Green Valley. So they named it Green Valley. Green Valley. Oh, yo. Those lazy. Fucks. That is crazy. I didn't yeah, think about that. On the exit, on the 215, the freeway here, guys, there's Green Valley exit, and the next exit is Valle Verde, which is Green Valley. Yeah. So they they were just like... Valle. Gr- Valle Verde. If you're going to say it, say it. Valle Verde. Um, yo, before we end this, can I actually tell you something funny that happened? Uh, last night, I was having the weirdest dreams. Oh, okay. And you were involved in this one. It's the only one I remember out of the bunch. We were in LA. You were on stage at the comedy store in the in the main room and you were doing a set and I, you see me walk in all of a sudden you're like, Hey Jacob, why don't you come up here? And I was like, at the store. I was like, I don't, I don't think I'm actually allowed on stage. And instead of being like, Oh, what a cool opportunity. Absolutely. I was like, no, nah, I'm good. And you were like, you dipped. No, I didn't. Oh, it gets better. And he, you went, what? And I said, I said, no, I, I, I just don't think it's, uh, I was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm good. And you looked at me and you went, Get up here and do your job. And I was like, okay. And I just walked oh, on stage. Hilarious. Dream ended. I didn't even get to see how 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 bad I bombed at the store. It was a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> Would you bomb in your own dreams? Only in my dream. I mean, a bad dream, probably. Tell everybody what the deal is. Do you want to get your your stuff out of the way before you interrupt me as I end this podcast? Or do you have anything you need to say? Do we want to get... We'll do 7M real quick. Real okay. quick. Real sure. quick. All right. So this, the documentary on Netflix, the 7M TikTok. The Dancing with the Devil, I think is what it's called, right? Yeah. I, here's what I'm even, what I was more shocked about. Is that that many people follow people who just dance on TikTok. Holy shit. Dude, Charlie, sh- Charlie D'Amelio's got like over 100 million followers on TikTok. Yeah, what's crazy is I don't know who that is. Exactly. Charlie D'Amelio? D'Amelio. Charlie and Dixie D'Amelio, they're sisters, but they were kind of like, they're like Mount Rushmore of TikTok. So, so these women who were on this one, they were sisters too. And one of the sisters got hooked up with this cult or church or whatever. Same thing. Uh, not the same thing, but like they were, and she, they, she wasn't hanging out with her family. Anyways, I'm not going to explain the whole doc. I am blown away that people, this is the whole phenomenon to me about dancing with the stars. Here's why it blows me away. Because if you just did a show where you're like, hey, we're going to do a show where these people are going to ballroom dance, nobody would watch. And then if you were like, hey, we're going to do a show with a bunch of celebrities you've probably never heard of, and you've never watched them do what they're celebrities for. It's not just they aren't the top celebrities but it's like a an actor or a, a, a singer 
who you wouldn't watch do their actual job. Right. So now you're taking something that nobody would watch anyone do, ballroom dance, and then you're taking people who nobody watches them do their actual job, and you put them together, and people can't stop watching. Yeah. And- I, I, it, I, if you would... If you had said, hey, D- I'm going to pitch this show, I'd have been like, that's the dumbest idea ever. Nobody watches them do what they normally do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I, I would agree with that. But yeah, it's uh, it really just is like, also, it's like, social media itself is really a cult. Like, it, the following that some of those people have, those followings are like, not intentionally cults, but like, those people would be like, like some of the like, the Dick Rider fans, they'd yeah. be like, oh, I would, like, I would die for this person. It's like, relax. Like, you say that thinking they're going to notice you. They're never going to know who you are. Like, I just don't get the blind following of somebody in a higher stature. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but the higher status is is all perceived shit. The, you know what I mean? Yeah. The, that, it's, all, the, it's, all, it's all lights. It's, it's all it is. My hat is on the shelf. Anyways. Yeah, the, I, 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 I just didn't understand. Like, I guess I should have been more in tune with how big dancing is. Maybe you know what? We're gonna do a TikTok this, this in Portland, where you just shout out names of dances, and I'll do them. Love it, because I don't think I'll know most of them. Let's start with the Running Man. I'm gonna say the windmill after that. Windmill, windmill, like the windmill. You mean like the breakdancing windmill? No, no, the standing windmill. Okay. I can't wait. Yeah. This Throw, by the way, throwing out the first pitch at the Aviators game, July 2nd. Woo! Liz. Oh, also Hawaii. We're going to Hawaii. Yeah! Also, tell sense. everybody what the deal is. All right. First and foremost, thank you guys so much for, for tuning in, as always. None of this would be possible without any of you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, ComedianJoshua.com for tour dates and tickets. We are in Portland this weekend. We are in Hawaii the week after. I don't know if we're anywhere last weekend in June. We are not. Great. And then first week of July 4th weekend, we are here in Vegas at Kimmel's Comedy Club. Come see us. It's going to be fun. I'm going to be dressed to the nines in America shit for all four shows. Uh, Every Monday, we're at Kimmel's Comedy Club. Also, 7.30 p.m. Come see us. Um, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Uh, It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. TikTok? TikTok. Jake underscore Wolf. TikTok. That's what my mom would say. Are you on that TikTok? Yep. Uh, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. And uh, like I said, I was just on the Natural Bros podcast last night. Uh, I got to, we got to do a little punishment for one of the guys on there last night too, which was pretty funny. Um, So when that comes out, be on the lookout for it. It was super fun. Um, And thank you guys, as always. uh, Tell somebody you love them today. Do something nice for someone. We'll see y'all next week. Love you. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.